welcome back. And today we're back to working on the PDP-11 here, and we're in kind of an interesting spot with it. We have this beautiful cabinet with two BA-23 chassis in it, and I don't really know the best way to build this up. Uh, most of the cabinet is empty space, so I would like to utilize that in some way. And also, I have a ton of PDP-11 Q-Bus cards to choose from. In the previous episode, we met up with Mike down in Austin, who hooked me up with uh, essentially both of these boxes here that are just full of PDP-11 Q-Bus cards, either 1173 or 1183. And uh, these cards look, you know, a little something like this. This is just a little drive control card. It's got a, a pair of AM2901 bit slice ALUs on it. And uh, I, man, I think there's enough in here to build up like three complete PDP-11 systems. And ultimately, I was thinking that I wanted to build up uh, two systems. I wanted to build up kind of an ultimate one here that uses a lot of the uh, storage that Mike also hooked me up with. We've got some eight inch floppy drives as well as full height five and a quarter inch uh, hard disk drives. And I also wanted to build up a kind of smaller portable PDP-11 that I could take with me to events. And well, I'm gonna throw a wrench into the middle of all of that planning because a little while ago, Mitch down in Houston got in touch with me and said, hey, I've got some PDP-11 kit that I would like to donate to the channel uh, if you'd be interested in coming down and getting it. And I said, absolutely. Anything you want to donate, I would 100% love to get and put to use because I refuse to scrap anything. The scrapping the old vintage electronics just makes my soul hurt. We're gonna, we're gonna try and use everything. And if I can't put it directly to use, I will get it into the hands of somebody who will. And so it took us a little while for our schedules to line up. And finally they did. And so I sent him a message. And I said, hey, do you think it'll all fit in a sedan? And he said, uh, well, you, you, you might want to bring a truck. I said, okay. So it's, it's a little more than just a little bit of PDP-11 stuff. And so anyways, I drove down there yesterday and it's a lot more than a little. It filled the truck completely and I didn't even get it all. <laughs> it is just the most epic PDP-11 haul in history. This is unbelievable. Just, oh man, just talking about it is <laughs> giving me goosebumps. And I don't even know everything that's in there. We only had a limited amount of time to get the truck loaded because it was on a weekday and Mitch had to get back to work. So I just kind of started throwing boxes and everything into the truck. It's fully loaded. I was bouncing off of the bump stops on the way back home, but it's here, it's safe, it's sound. I think it's time to start unloading the truck and cataloging and categorizing everything that we got because there's some really exciting stuff in there. I know for a fact that there's at least one probably three PDP 1144s, which are a, a Unibus full TTL P PDP 11. I'm really excited about that. There's also a Microvax in the uh, vertical cabinet that uses the BA23 chassis. So I'm super excited about that. That's only like 2% of everything that's in the truck. So let's get everything unloaded and take a look at what Mitch hooked me up with. And Mitch, thank you so much. This is awesome. All right, let's get to work. Unloading it all actually went really smoothly, and I tried to separate all of the items as I recognized them into their kind of own discrete piles, and uh, there's some pretty epic VAX stuff coming out of here, as well as a lot of 1144 stuff. Uh, but once everything was out and roughly sorted, it was time to start on the most important bit, and that was cataloging all the different PDP and VAX cards we received in the lot. Thankfully, my father came out and lent a helping hand, and between the two of us, we emptied bin after bin of epic old PDP cards, writing down exactly what their numbers were and how many of each we had. All right, it's been a few days, but organization is going pretty well, I think. I pulled all of the cards out, including the cards that we got in all of our previous hauls, and I have consolidated them all into these uh, six boxes here. And uh, they're not organized by type because Dex naming scheme is ridiculous and doesn't make any sense, but they're actually organized by size. Uh, so all of these are the uh, 
I don't know what you'd call that, the six height boards. They've got six of these uh, little edge connectors on the bottom here. Um, so I've got two boxes pretty much full of those. Uh, and then we have two boxes of quad height cards and then uh, two boxes of dual height cards. So there's a boatload of cards in here and there's some really special ones that I wanna pull out and take a look at. And we'll do that once I get a little more work done on the 1144 chassis over there because there's the cards are really unique for that, that machine. Uh, but there's a lot more stuff going on here that I've actually been able to find out. So uh, right next to me over here is a ton of drives. And so I'm gonna pull the camera down from way up there and zoom in on this so you guys can get a better look at that. All of the uh, deck tapes here have been organized and we actually got the drive with it. This is really interesting. It has a uh, slot on the front for a tape and a slot on the side for a tape. It's really strange that they would have them in that kind of weird orientation. I don't know what kind of chassis they were expecting for this to fit in. Uh, I got a lot more research that I need to do about that. But the fact that we have the drive means that we have a hope of reading all of the tapes. And if we take a look at the box underneath here, uh, we have some pretty interesting stuff in here. Uh, most notably, we've got another TK50 drive. This one doesn't have a tape in it. So between this one and the other one that I have, we should be able to get one of them working. We also have a uh, very clean looking RX50 here another one right here. So we've got two RX50s that we can work with. And then uh, we have these digital branded full height five and a quarter uh, hard disk drives. These are RA70s. Um, it's really neat to see an actual digital branded hard drive as opposed to the uh, more generic branding ones like uh, Maxtor or, well, uh, Micropolis, like this one is a Micropolis drive. And so it's, it's a huge mix, but seeing an actual RA70 here is really, really cool. Uh, but unfortunately we didn't get any of the big drives, no 14 inch drives, no uh, nine track tape drives, none of those. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for something like an RL02 because that seems perfect for a, uh, a uh, 1144. And uh, speaking of which, let's take a look at some of the chassis now that we've got them organized. All right, this one that I'm leaning on is an 1144 chassis with the actual uh, proper front cover here. This one is set aside specifically go to go to a good friend of mine. Uh, she's helping me out with a lot of really hard, difficult stuff. And this one will be filled out with pretty much a full complement of cards. Uh, right next to it is a VAX 11730, and it's also a fully complete machine. I have every single card that the 11730 uses, which is set aside for it, as well as some documentation that we found for it too. Uh, this one is really unique because it's a full TTL level machine. It's also the slowest VAX that was ever built. Um, I'm not sure who this one's gonna go to. I unfortunately don't have the space to keep it. Um, so we're gonna keep it all together, keep it complete and get it to somebody who's actually going to use it. Uh, this one here is a micro VAX 2. Uh, again, I don't necessarily have the space to keep it, so ultimately that's going to go to somebody who's going to put it to good use. Uh, right behind it is a Vax of some type. I'm not sure. It's a Vax 8350, and it uses these wild uh, cards that have ZIF sockets, uh, zero insertion force. So you just slide these cards out, and they have these really crazy connectors that clamp from the side. This is very, very neat, but it's a little too new for me. So that Vax is also gonna go to somebody. I generally try to aim for stuff that's pure through-hole technology, and uh, this is like a mix of surface mount and through-hole, so it's just a little bit too new, but there's definitely somebody out there that is going to enjoy this for sure. Uh, Man, it, the zip sockets on it are worth it alone. And uh, this little chassis here is just part of the cards. This thing, actual, the 8350 itself, is actually full of cards. It has uh, two of these inside of it that are full. So there's a full complement of cards that go with that, and we can get that into the hands of somebody that's really going to enjoy it. There's a few more chassis over there that we figured out as well, and they're really cool too. So here on the end, we have a VAC Station 3200, although I believe it just comes with a Q bus and we could essentially build this up into an 1183 or pretty much whatever we want. If I have the space, I will hang on to this one because uh, I, I really like how 
skinny and narrow it is. And it should be just a standard BA23 chassis inside of it, which should be the same as what our uh, 1183 was. Uh, next to it is an 1123. This one's gonna go to somebody uh, pretty special that's helped me out with a bunch of stuff. Uh, and it also has a Q-Bus backplane in it, so we'll populate it with pretty much whatever Q-Bus cards that they want. And uh, this one right here, I'm not really sure about. It looks like it's Unibus, the same bus that's gonna be on the 1144, and it's just kind of an expansion uh, chassis, I guess. So we'll probably keep this next to the 1144 that I'm also going to keep, so that way we can build it out into kind of this ultimate 1144. And then uh, there's a bunch of various back planes, and one of them that I'm really excited about is this little guy right here. This is, uh, I believe, an 1103, or at least that's what it says on the back here, 1103AA. Uh, it just <laughs> has four slots in it, and this is perfect for like a desktop PDP-11. If this is Cubus, which I believe it is, uh, we can populate this with uh, either full four quad height cards or eight dual height cards, so we could theoretically build up a pretty wild 1173 in this with a nice full height five and a quarter next to it and a little power supply, and have ourselves essentially a, uh, a PDP-1173 in, well, the form factor of like a desktop PC. That's really cool. I'm super excited about this backplane. Uh, but that's just one of the builds. The big build, the one that we're looking forward to the most is the 1144. This is the 1144 that I'm definitely going to keep, and I'm going to put this one in the cabinet that we got from the 1183. And I think it has to sit in the top of the cabinet because, uh, well, it, it doesn't slide out, it rotates up. This is really strange, uh, but <laughs> it rotates up like the hood of a car. That's absolutely wild. Uh, but I think the reason it did that was so that you could rotate it up and then get access to the back plane so that you could change the wire wrapping on the back plane. Um, so I think it absolutely has to go in the topmost slot. Then we'll put the expansion right below it, and then we'll leave the rest of the cabinet open for an RL02 or a nine track tape drive or pretty much any kind of big format storage that we can get our hands on. But first things first, this thing has to get out of this cabinet because I'm not gonna keep this cabinet. This is gonna go to somebody else. I don't have space for uh, two PDP cabinets in my room. So we gotta figure out how to get this big heavy thing out of this cabinet so I can then get this cabinet cleaned up and ready to go. So. That's the next step, let's get to work. It took a bit of doing to figure out the hinge system, but I did manage to actually get the chassis out of the cabinet, and then I wanted to remove everything from the cabinet so I could clean it up. I just didn't feel right sending this on to another enthusiast with 40 years of dust caked onto it. So uh, out it went to the hose and it got a nice spray down. I also spent some time wiping down the power distribution block on the bottom before getting the sides and top onto the cabinet itself. And then next, I wanted to dismantle the 1144 enough to blow it out with the air hose. But uh, everything seemed to start cleaning up really nice, and one cool thing I discovered was that the three cooling fans are on a tray that slides in from the side. And a little more cleaning and wiping down, and really, I think this one is good to go. Well, that was just a brief look at everything that Mitch hooked me up with. And Mitch, thank you so much. This is an epic, epic haul. And, well, I said it was a brief look because there's a huge amount, a colossal amount. It's hard to wrap my head around how much PDP and VAC stuff there is here. And honestly, it's, it's too much for one person. If I did a deep dive on every card, which is something that I absolutely want to do, I want to get into each individual card and figure out what's going on, how it works, what it does, plug it into the system and use it, it would take years. And that means that that would be years that a large majority of these systems are just sitting here not being used. And that just doesn't feel right. We have an opportunity here to get a ton of PDP and VAX equipment into enthusiasts' hands and get the machines up and going, and nothing is better for this hobby than more machines out there 
running. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get these machines into the hands of, uh, well, uh, local members of the retro computing community because they weigh so much that they're kind of hard to ship. Uh, so we're gonna get these machines out there. We're gonna get more people working on them. And as a matter of fact, a good friend of mine, David, showed up yesterday and we loaded his car up. He's He got the 11730, which he is very amped up about. He got the Vax 8350, like I said, that one was a bit too new to me, and he might repatriate that to another enthusiast. Uh, and he also got a bit of an 1144. He didn't get, I think, enough cards to really build it up into a full working system, so it's going to become one of his long-term projects. And then uh, the other 1144 is going to a uh, close friend of mine up north, and we got the 1123, I think, going over the pond. Uh, but that still leaves a huge amount of PDP kit here for me to work on, most notably the 1144. I am really stoked about this machine because it's a full TTL machine. Everything is built essentially around 7400 series logic. That's why the CPU takes up like uh, eight or nine slots here. And in, in these cards here, there's some that are really, really special. Uh, most notably, we have the M7091 and the M7092. These are, I believe, extremely rare cards. This adds a completely additional new instruction set to the processor here, specifically for business applications, or at least that's how I understand it. And so having those cards in this system is really exciting. And I really wanna take them out and do a deep dive look at them, figure out what they do, how they work, and then get them back into the machine and get this machine spun up. But there's a lot more going on in here. Like I said, the, uh, the processor fills up pretty much the top half. And then we have uh, some memory cards here, but then there's a whole lot of stuff going on down here. And we have some multiplexer cards down there. We have some drive control cards and uh, we have well, I think I think a network card, an Ethernet controller, um, it's a Dell NUA, or it's a, I don't know. I've, I've still got a ton of stuff to learn about uh, DEC stuff here, especially PDP-11 stuff, especially Unibus stuff. This is a, a, a full new level for me. Um, but I think we have enough to kind of get us started on at least getting this machine up and going. Because, well, we have one big problem with this machine, it's that we don't have any mass storage. The DEC tapes should work with this machine, and they communicate via serial, so that should go through one of the multiplexer cards down here. And the uh, two 8-inch Shugart floppy drives that I got, they go through a third party card, which is a, a digital system or a data system design card right here. And I think this will allow me to use those eight inch floppies on the 1144 and at least get this machine up and running while I really start to hunt for a proper drive for this machine, which would be an RL01 or an RL02. I think those are the, the drives that were, would have been used with an 1144. And those drives, I, I would really love to get my hands on one because they're very similar to the Hawk drive, which I've been working on a lot with the Centurion. As a matter of fact, I think they use the same removable data pack. So the heads are gonna be very similar. The construction is going to be very similar. Granted, it's gonna be kind of digital's own take on it, but I would love to get one, especially if it needs restoration, because I would love to dig into it and bring one back to life. So if anybody out there knows where an RL01 or an RL02 that needs work is, send me a message. Either hit me up on the Discord, leave a comment below. Um, if you leave a comment, I might miss it, so you might have to leave multiple comments, but if you hit me up on the Discord, you'll definitely be able to get in touch with me, and we can get an RL01 or RL02 14-inch disk drive for this big beast. Now, there's still a lot more to go. What about the 1183 that I got in the first episode and then all of the really awesome stuff that I got from Mike in the episode after that? I, I still definitely wanna build those up, but the 1144 is going in this cabinet. So what's gonna to happen to those? Well, those are on the BA23 chassis. That's this guy right here. Oh, there we go. So these are in beautiful shape and they're really skinny. You can see how narrow they are. So two of them stacked on top of each other stays pretty small. 
So I want to get something like a, maybe a 4U or a 6U server rack, something really small and tight, and put both of these in that server rack so I have something that's really, really portable. And then I can just toss that server rack with both of these chassis in it into the back of the car and take it out to an event and let people get hands-on with a fully specced out PDP-11 because we're going to use both of these chassis to build up one machine that is rocking the uh, the Bowman card, the QRGB card, the 1183, the PMI memory. We're going to spec that thing out to be the ultimate, the most highly specced out late model PDP-11 that you could get. I don't know if that's possible, but we're going to try. We're going to try and get there with all the Cubus stuff that we have. And uh, I think that'll be pretty epic. So, uh, the, and that's just a start of it. We still got to build up the little desktop version. And there's about three or four more Cubus backplanes out there. And I have enough Cubus cards to build up like six or seven PDP-11s. So we've got a ton of PDP-11 uh, content to come. And I hope you like mini computers because between the PDP-11 and the Centurion, and well, I hope you like mega computers and the vacuum tube computer that we got more work to do on still. There's a lot of large scale computing stuff coming. So uh, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next episode.